We are back, and this time I'm going to configure a remote access server using a secure SSTP connection instead of the old unreliable PPTP. Hello friends, this is Nick from NLB Solutions and again bringing another new video on the topic of uh, how you can create a remote access server or a VPN server that is using a, a secure connection. The last time when I configured my remote access server there were a few comments saying that uh, the uh, PPTP version is not reliable and I should agree with that. Um, I think that PPTP is old technology and it should be disregarded and if you can and if it is applicable you need to configure a more secure way uh, either using uh, different uh, network devices because uh, nowadays the uh, advanced network devices uh, can configure a secure VPN connection or using a third party tool or in this case using the Microsoft server as a remote access server. So, what we need to do is um, we need to have a server that will be dedicated as our remote access server. And you can see right here I've uh, created a VPN01 server that I'm going to use uh, to configure my remote access. Again, I have uh, my domain controller, NLB DC01, and to test the connection I have a um, PC that... Um, I'm going to use in the end to confirm that my VPN is fully functional and working. So before we continue with the actual configuration of the settings for our remote access server, I want to provide you a bit more information about the SSTP or what SSTP does and why it is needed. So SSTP stands for Secure Socket Tunneling Protocol and this is a form of a VPN tunnel that provides a mechanism to transport the point-to-point -point protocol traffic through an SSL or TLS channel. So what this means is it uses a um, certificate, an SSL certificate, so um, to encrypt the data and use port 443, which is the HTTPS protocol, to pass through virtually all firewalls and proxy servers. So you don't need any additional ports to be open on your environment, like if you remember the PPTP, which requires 1723 port to be allowed. This one, if you have uh, the 443, so for example, if you have any websites in your environment that uses a uh, an HTTP connection to them, you can use the same port to um, to be open on your firewall and allow this to connect to your VPN server. So this is a great thing. Uh, all other um, VPN solutions require different uh, open ports on your firewalls, but this one integrates the um, 443 port to um, basically go through every single firewall or um, any any web proxies that you have. So. I think this solution is a good solution. It allows a uh, um, key negotiation, encryption, and traffic integrity checking. So uh, it's a good, secure solution for businesses nowadays. So enough with the mumbo-jumbo now. So uh, let's uh, start by implementing our remote access server. And as you heard me saying, uh, we will need a certificate to be uh, installed on our remote access server so that the uh, connection can be secured using this certificate. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to install the remote access role on my VPN01 server. And I'm going to select only direct access and VPN remote access server. And I'm going to click next. It's uh, saying that it's going to install the uh, web server role, the IIS. And um, I will leave the, the settings, the default ones. And I'm going to click install. So while this is installing, I'm going to uh, switch to my and open, to open an MMC console. Yes. And uh, in this MMC console, I'm going to add remove a snap-in and select the certificate snap-in. 
I'm going to use the uh, computer account and click next and finish. Click OK. And if I expand the tile on the left side, you'll see that I have different options for uh, certificates. So you want to go to your personal folder and in there you will see that you don't have any certificates available at the moment or it's possible that you have on the server that you're going to configure this. But as this is a brand new server, it doesn't have any certificates. So um, there are a few things that I want to mention here. You can both use internal CA uh, certificate for this one or you can use a third party SSL certificates. And um, if you are choosing to um, use the internal one of course both have different uh, advantages and disadvantages so if you are going to use the internal one like me in this case it's going to be free for you but the users uh, that are going to connect to this server need to trust the root certificate authority so this is a different topic and um, it's possible that I'm going to create a video in the future about certificates but um, um, if you configure the internal one, the root um, certificate needs to be trusted. So, if you choose the external third-party SSL one, uh, of course, you know that there are um, a lot of um, really good and really known certificate authorities that you can purchase certificates. It's going to be trusted uh, by your clients and the only thing you need to do is it, uh, you need to add it to this server or add it to your remote access server. But the downside is they are going to cost you money. So advantages and disadvantages, you decide what to choose. So uh, if you uh, right click under the um, personal folder, go to all tasks, request a new certificate, click next. And in here, you can see that I've configured a certificate authority that is installed on my domain controller at the moment. And I'm going to use the internal method because it's free. <laughs> and I like things when they are free and functional. So I'm going to select the Active Directory enrollment policy, click next. And you can see that um, I've configured a template and this is again a topic that uh, corresponds to certificates and how you configure certificate authorities in Microsoft, but uh, I'm going to create videos um, in the future about this one. So um, you can see that I have the NLB web server uh, currently configured and I have um, an exclamation mark saying that more information is required for you to enroll this certificate. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a common name for my certificate and I'm going to call that vpn.nlbsolutions.com. Of course, you need to provide your um, own um, common name in, in this field and you need to press the at key so you can add this one in here. So if I apply and click OK, you can see that the status changed to available so I can click enroll and it will um, issue a certificate for me. So you can see right here that I have the um, vpn.nlb-solutions.com and it's issued by NLB Lab CA, which is my internal CA. You can see that I have the uh, expiration date and uh, intended purposes uh, I have uh, the server authentication. So after I've issued my certificate of course you can check it from here. I can open and see the details of the certificate. I can see the certification path and this is the root certificate that I was talking about. This uh, certificate needs to be pushed to your um, client machines that are going to connect to the, your VPN server. So uh, for now, I'm going to close this MMC window, click no, and uh, go to um, my installation progress. And you can see it finished successfully without any problems. So I'm going to close this window as well. And the next thing that I want to do is I want to bind my certificate to my um, web server. So. In order for you to do this, you need to go to Internet Information Services, expand your server, and um, 
under uh, the um, NLB VPN 01, you can see that I have different options. Application pools, where you can check the application pools that are currently working. If you expand a bit, you will see the sites and the default website. So the default website is uh, the thing that I need to configure. And if you go to bindings, you will see that I have the um, HTTP option. Uh, currently available on port 80 but I can, what I can do is uh, I can click on another one select HTTPS on port 443 you can see that I have a host name which is VPN NLB VPN dot NLB solutions dot com and under the SSL certificate, you can see that I have the SSL certificate for VPN at NLB Solutions. So I'm going to click OK. And I have the host name, uh, VPN NLB Solutions. Of course, you can uh, remove this host name if you want and just leave the certificate in there. But uh, let's see what will happen if I add the, uh, the host name in here as well. Now that I configured the binding for my um, iOS, I'm going to close the windows and go to the exclamation mark where it asks me to um, configure the post deployment uh, configurations. So I'm going to click on the wizard and you can see right here that I have different options to deploy direct access and VPN, only direct access, access or only VPN. So I'm going to choose only VPN. And this will open the uh, routing and remote access console and in here I will need to right click on the server and configure and enable routing and remote access. So I'm going to choose next and under the configuration window I have different options that um, I'll be able to choose from. So uh, I'm going to select the custom configuration because I want only specific thing to be enabled on this server and this is the uh, VPN access server. So I'm going to click next and click finish to this one. So if we click finish, it will say that the routing and remote access service is ready to use. So I'm going to start the service. It's going to think about it. And there you go. You can see that I have the NLB VPN 01 currently enabled and if I expand that window a bit so you can see better okay so let me just expand the tile as well uh, you can see that uh, I have uh, different options that uh, I can configure on my uh, VPN server so let's start by configuring the allowed ports so you can go on the right, on the left side right here where it says ports and you can see that we have different uh, ports that are currently open and are inactive as you can see under the status. So um, as you know, um, these ports will be used by your users to connect to your remote access server. But what I want to achieve here is only to allow the SSTP port to be available. But um, how you can achieve this is by right clicking the configure button right here and for example say that I only want, uh, want 12 users because these are my 12 users that um, I um, have and I know that are going to uh, connect to this server. So you can see I've reduced the number of SSTP connections to 12 only. What I can do is I can reduce uh, the other connections as well if I want to. So for example 12 and 12 in here yes and 12 in here okay okay and you can see that when i click apply and click ok if i refresh this window it should uh, narrow the connections to uh, 12 for each protocol to be allowed so from here, if you have, if you experience any problems with users saying that they are not able to connect, it's possible that uh, more than 12 users, in my case, are trying to connect to the server. So this is another thing for you to uh, troubleshoot if you experience any problems. The next thing I want to do is I want to double check and bind the certificate to my routing and remote access server. 
you can see that I'm currently using the IPv4 uh, router uh, and IPv4 remote access. Under security, you can see that I have different um, um, authentication providers. So uh, in, in this case, uh, you can even select the authentication methods that are allowed uh, for your users to use to connect to the server. And uh, the extensible authentication protocol or eApp is uh, really a secure uh, protocol that should be used. Um, so I'm going to leave these options, the two options, the MSCHAP version 2 and eApp, because I know that they are secure enough for my users to use uh, when they connect to my server. So on the bottom, you can see that I have the SSL certificate binding. So um, you have the option to use HTTP, but I don't want to use this. So you can see that under certificate, I have the option to use the uh, VPN uh, certificate that I've previously configured. So again, I can see the certificate. And uh, under version uh, IP version 4, um, you can see that uh, you have two options to configure dynamic host uh, configuration protocol or DHCP to give IP addresses to my users or to uh, configure a static address pool. So this is another thing that I've noticed through my um, working days that uh, for some reason if uh, the DHCP server is not reachable users will not receive an IP address. They will be able to connect to the remote access server but they won't receive a proper IP address from the internal network. So this is a thing that uh, you need to remember so you can um, investigate issues. Of course you have the IPv6, uh, the uh, IK, uh, I IKE version 4 PPP settings and logging settings if you want uh, to have uh, to make any debug on the remote access server. So from this one I'm ready and it's going to ask me to restart the um, routing and remote access uh, role, um, the service, so it can apply the settings. I'm going to click OK to the message and I'm going to wait for it to fully finish. So before I continue with the next uh, configuration, which is going to be configuring the uh, remote access policies, and this is really an optional one, but I strongly recommend for you to uh, do it in your environment, because it's really important to know and to allow only the proper users to use your uh, remote access servers and to deny any other users. So I'm going to switch to my domain controller going to close the windows in here and I'm going to open Active Directory Users and Computers and in here you can see that I have a um, few users uh, configured and I'm going to click New and create a group and this is going to be a, sec um, a security group that I'm going to name Remote Access Users so users within this group will be able to make uh, remote access connections. So I know that Tom is uh, one of my remote users uh, from my marketing department, for example, and he's uh, traveling a lot and he's going to uh, be using my uh, remote access servers for connection. And I know that Ali, on the other hand, is always staying in the office, so she doesn't need the remote access connection. So I'm going to once again switch to my VPN server, minimize this window and open the network policy server. So now that we have the network policy server, I'm going to expand that a bit as well so you can see better. Okay. And you can see that uh, I have different options on the left side. But what I need is uh, to configure under policies to configure the uh, network policies. So you can see that I have uh, two um, policies that are currently configured. And what I need to do is I need to right click, click new. And uh, first I will specify the uh, policy name which is going to be remote access users allow and you can see that um, I have the option to select uh, the um, type of network access server. And in my case, uh, my network access server will be remote access server or VPN dial up. So I'm going to click next. And the next step, you will need to configure the conditions that your users will um, 
be selected from to allow or deny any specific actions. So the conditions are, in my case, if you remember, I've created a security group. So I can add Windows security groups, but you can have different options. You can specify date and time restrictions. For example, you're uh, not allowed to connect to your remote access when it's out of hours. It's a good, a good approach. You have different, different things. But in my case, I'm going to add the groups and I'm going to specify remote. So remote access users. Okay. And I'm going to click next. Here I have the option to access, uh, to allow the access or deny the access. In my case, I want to grant access to the users that are members of this group. And I'm going to click next. And under the um, authentication methods, you can see that uh, there are none at the moment. So I will need to add the methods that I think will be more secure. And if you remember, um, uh, on my uh, remote access configuration, I've configured the uh, app and MS Chap version two to be allowed. So I'm going to add these options here as well. And I'm going to uh, click next. And on the um, constraints tab, you'll see that I have different options. For example, if a user um, is not using the remote access session, you can configure the uh, disconnection time for the user. For example, if you have uh, uh, huge remote access users and if you have a lot of volume going through your server, it's going to be a good idea for you to um, select this option so you can have um, optimize your performance, optimize the performance for the users and on the server. Another consideration is security. For example, you don't want a user that is uh, not as he is at his uh, computer or her computer and not looking at the monitor at the moment to be allowed to be to stay connected on the server. Because, for example, other users that are not members of your uh, company can uh, go and look at your company data. So for this one, I'm going to choose the defaults. I don't want to configure anything at the moment. And I'm going to choose next. Here we have uh, additional settings like um, any standards that uh, that you want to configure, any vendor specific. And this is for the Radius server. This is a more advanced topic or on how you can configure Radius server and clients. I don't have this at the moment, so um, it should be OK. And you have the encryption uh, and IP filters. If you want any specific IP ranges only to connect to your server, I'm going to click next for this one. And this is pretty much the uh, final configuration page where you only need to click finish. And the policy will be right on top which with processing order one. So if you if you create other policies, for example, to deny any specific users to connect, you can um, process uh, the order or move down, move up and um, specify which policy will be processed first, which second, which third and so on. Now that everything is pretty much configured on the server side, we can go to the client desktop machine that I've configured for Tom and he's going to use this one uh, at his home. So um, in order for me to allow Tom to connect to my network, I need to create him a VPN connection. So you can achieve this by going to the network and sharing center, set up a new connection on network, select the connect to a workplace, click next use the internet connection VPN. And here under the internet address, I will specify my uh, internet address for my VPN, which is vpn.nlb-solutions.com. And for the uh, destination name, I'm going to specify NLB corporate VPN. I'm not going to select remember my credentials and I'm going to cre click create. And the, under the uh, adapter settings, you can see that I have a new NLB corporate VPN connection. So uh, what I can do is I can create a copy of this one, or um, if you want, you can uh, um, set this to um, 
your desktop if you'd like but I'm going to just click connect this time and you can see that I have the VPN currently available in here of course I have different uh, advanced options and what I want to do this uh, now is if you remember on my routing and remote server I've added different and I left different connections to be available for my users to connect and you can see right here that the default one is uh, IKEA E version 2 but uh, IKEA version 2 requires different ports than the SSTP so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the properties of the VPN connection and instead of automatic I'm going to manually select the secure socket tunneling protocol furthermore I will select the option to use extendable authentication and if you remember we've set the eApp MSCHAP version 2 to be the one that is allowed to connect so now that we have the connection as SSTP, I'm going to switch back to the VPN, click connect, it will ask me for the credentials, so I'm going to specify um, Tom's credentials, and I'll be lab, and then Tom Belfort, so I'm going to specify his password, press enter, and you can see that I'm currently connected to my corporate VPN connection. So I'm going to switch to the re remote access server and confirm that this connection indeed is a secure SSTP one. So let's switch to the VPN server and I will need to open my um, routing and remote access. And you can see I left the connection uh, to stay for more than seven minutes so I can confirm that uh, this connection is stable after all and if I go to ports on the status you can see that uh, the uh, VPN tunnel that is currently up is the SSTP uh, VPN tunnel and this is the uh, secure VPN tunnel that is secured by a certificate that I've um, configured, I've issued and installed on my configuration so this pretty much is how you can configure a secure VPN connection to your environment so um, this is done on Windows Server 2016 but uh, this is pretty much the same situation with Windows Server 2012 and I think 2008 as well. So um, if you have any comments you can always put them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. If you have any recommendations for um, any future videos you can always put them again in the comment section. If you like the video you can always uh, share and like it and if you don't like it you can click the dislike button and leave a comment what section of the video is not so good and what can be improved this was nick from nlb solutions thank you very much for viewing and do not forget click on the subscribe button